I think if the Democrats want to believe that they do not have a conference that continues to make anti-Semitic remarks, they need to do something about it. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy now calling out Democrats and not facing up to what he says is a clear case of anti-Semitism in their caucus. Meanwhile, in 90 minutes, the Israeli president delivers an address to the joint meeting uh, of Congress. Senator Marco Rubio, member of the Senate Foreign Affairs uh, Relations Committee, he'll be there. And, sir, you're with us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, there will be several progressives who boycott this. What problem yeah. do you see in their position? Well, first is the practical problem that although this is a free country, people are allowed to believe whatever they want. There are, there's a strong element in the Marxist left that hates Israel and hates everything Israel stands for. And you see that demonstrated in the, in the comments that they've made. But here's the bigger problem in my view. So Israel is a very unique country um, for a lot of reasons. But one of the things that makes it unique is that it's surrounded by enemies who are constantly looking for cues to see whether Israel has the support of the United States. They understand that ultimately if Israel gets into an all-out conflict, it will require U.S. assistance to re help resupply them because they could be exhausted in their munitions and the like. And so they're constantly looking to see, is there an opening? Is there a break? Is there a crevice? And so unlike any other country in the world, we have to be very careful about what policymakers, whether it's in the White House and the way Biden treats Netanyahu, or whether it's members of Congress, talk about Israel. There are things we cannot say about Israel publicly that we would say about other countries, because it literally encourages Islamic Jihad, Hamas, Hezbollah, all of their enemies to uh, try to uh, attack or potentially attack Israel. And so and, and, I think and, it's very and damaging. You know that many of these progressive lawmakers um, have taken the side of the Palestinians. And Congresswoman Jayapal said on Saturday that Israel is a, quote, racist state. Then she later put out a statement. Some called it an apology. Others said it was a clarification. Here's what she said. I do not believe the idea of Israel as a nation is racist. I do, however, believe that Netanyahu's extreme right government is engaged in discriminatory and outright racist policies and that there are extremist racists driving that policy within the leadership of the current government. Is that a clarification or no. is that an apology in, in Not really. any sense, do you see? No, 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 look, no. Israel is a Jewish state. It's created to be the homeland for the Jewish people. The world created Israel in a sense. The United Nations chartered them. They were attacked from day one after they were founded. But uh, Israel exists as a homeland for the Jewish people after World War II, after the Holocaust, to make sure that something like that never happened again. It has to protect that identity. If they followed some of the policies that people on the radical left, like that congresswoman and others would want, they would cease to be the Jewish state. It's as simple as that. And so I think we forget there are still people alive today who survived the Holocaust. Holocaust that wasn't that long ago. Anti-Semitism is an ancient poison uh, that's been around for a long time. It's cost the lives of millions of people. It's been uh, one of the true atrocities of human history. And, and it's something we can't take lightly. And so I think preserving their identity as a Jewish state is the, print, is the reason for existing for Israel. And I'm 100 percent supportive of that. And there are people in American politics that are not. Yeah, well, the president of Herzog will be there at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, he was with the he was in the Oval Office yesterday. This is kind of what the address was given on behalf of the U.S. president. Just wanted viewers to listen to this here. We brought Israelis and Palestinians together at a political level and the uh, and uh, at the uh, and Aqua and as well as Shran. Yes. And uh, as I uh, affirmed to Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday, America's commitment to Israel is firm. I, I don't know how you forcefully you consider that. Uh, I know you're a big football well, fan, I don't and, understand and, and, and you like a good head coach to give a good speech. Um, that was far from it. Yeah, I don't know what he said. I hope it was captioned because I really well, couldn't the one even th hear. The one thing he did say. As I confirmed to Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday, America's commitment to Israel is firm. The reason why that's important is that some are wondering about his commitment to Netanyahu. Continue. Well, I mean, so when is he coming to the White House? When is he going to be treated the way we treat the prime ministers of other countries? I mean, we had the leftist president of Colombia in the White House. We had the leftist president of Brazil at the White House. Um, you know, so w when is he going to be treated the same way and, 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 and given that? So, you know, words are words. To the extent Israel's enemies could understand what Biden was saying, I think they're going to look more at actions. And I think the clear perception around the world, but particularly in the Middle East, is that this administration is, has problems with Netanyahu's government. Sir, thank you for your time. And we'll watch for that address at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. 75th thank anniversary you. for Israel now being celebrated. Thanks.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.